Well, I have to show this to you. Just tonight, President Joe Biden is delivering a speech in Detroit, Michigan, and you rarely see crowds as fired up as this and Biden as fired up as this. And before getting into the first clip, the most interesting part is the shots that he takes at Trump and the reaction from the crowd. We'll get to that. But also, as I've been saying, I'm perfectly open to and have been engaging in the conversation relating to the doubts about Biden's candidacy and the good faith discussions going on there. Since Biden's so publicly and firmly saying he's staying in, then I've made clear it's also important that we focus the conversation around that binary choice, Trump versus Biden, the importance of defeating Trump in November. And if Biden's staying on the ticket, as he'll say, as you're going to see here, very clearly, then what we need from him is what you're about to watch. Given the justified reasons people are having doubt, he needs to come out and bring this energy, I guess is my point. Here we go. I'm the nominee. I'm the nominee of this party because 14 million Democrats like you voted for me in the primaries. You made me the nominee. No one else, not the press, not the pundits, not the insiders, not donors. You, the voters, you decided. No one else. And I'm not going anywhere. I learned a long time ago that when you get knocked down, you get back up. I've led this nation from the depth of the pandemic to the strongest economy literally in the world. And as has been very well covered on this show, the record is undeniable. A lot of people deny it, but the record's undeniable. I think the concerns should not replace what is a factual discussion about his effective governance. Then you have this. So chanting, don't you quit there. And I want to say again, before going further, and so many great clips to look at, and I say this over and over again because of how much rage I've been seeing going in both directions within the pro-democracy movement, people on one side thinking Biden should drop out for the sake of defeating Trump, people saying he should stay in for the sake of defeating Trump and his governance and record justifying it, and the crazy rage towards one another has made it a part of my mission in this moment to articulate to people that that can't be where we direct our anger. Let's have these discussions. Let's have these debates. And I think it's incredible that we are introspective enough and not occult enough to engage in these discussions. And also, eventually, and I think we're getting close to when this will be the consensus, or at least it should be, we as a movement are going to realize, all right, Biden staying in, or it's only changed, but I'm saying if he sticks to this, then we're going to realize now's the time to unite back around the pro-democracy candidate, not ignore honest discussion, but hope for more events like this, I guess is, is my point going further. My dad would give me hell if I didn't turn and say, excuse my back, I apologize. Look, folks. Members of Congress. Debbie. Debbie. I've got your back. And then you have this. probably noticed there's been a lot of speculation lately what's joe biden gonna do is he gonna stay in the race is he gonna drop out here's my answer i am running and we're gonna win i'm not gonna change that in fact just today the Maris poll released a national poll that has me beating trump 50 to 48 and we talked about what was a sort of shocking revelation that 
things seem to be I want to yet say, given that it's a 24-hour period we're talking about, but the biggest takeaway from my previous segment was clearly all hopes not lost in this scenario we're now in were Biden staying on the ticket, as some are asserting, because we're not seeing the devastation some predicted in the reaction of the polls. The one he cited is accurate that he is even leading now in some, but still the average of polls has Trump ahead. But then the 538 forecast, the last I checked, it had him, uh, Biden, that is slightly favored to win. If you've been watching this show and you're not yet subscribed, I ask that you do just click that subscribe button. Very easy, free, but it makes quite the difference. Back to the video. Then you have Biden saying, do you really want to go back to the chaos of Donald Trump as president? Back when the United States lost three million jobs. And by the way, by the way, Donald Trump is the only president in American history, other than Herbert Hoover, who lost more jobs than he had when he came in. That's why I call him Donald Herbert Hoover Trump. There we go. Now, it gets more interesting. He's now making a point that a lot of people have made. I think the most fair way to phrase it is while the post-debate political fallout and what you would define as sort of competency concerns related discussions, while that's a story, absolutely, thus it should be covered, which is why I've been doing so, the emphasis and energy that has been directed the way of this story by certain outlets has been a little overboard in some cases, just considering how many important things should be getting the spotlight. For weeks, essentially one story seems a little bit wacky, but he points out here that that has allowed Trump to get a free pass when he shouldn't. So even within our own movement, as I've now said so many times, we hold, we hold our own accountable. We have honest discussions about them, including Biden. And also, we can't allow that to replace the very real discussions about the threat to democracy candidate Donald Trump. And that has been happening a little bit because of the free pass he's been getting. Just, it's, you know, if, if it wasn't so serious, it all means being like a made-up novel would happen. No, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. You may have noticed that since the debate, the press and their good guys and women up there, they've been hammering me. I, I make a lot of mistakes. No, no, I, I, no, 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 it's okay. It, they've been hammering me because I sometimes confuse names. I say, that's Charlie instead of Bill. But guess what? Donald Trump has gotten a free pass. And he'll expand on that point in a second, but <laughs> imagine, imagine Trump up on that stage and the crowd boos the media. Is his reaction going to be, no, 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 these are great men and women, but he happens to disagree with the current coverage, but the respect for the media being present, whereas Trump, enemy of the people, the government should come down hard on those outlets and it's similar to even with what we're i'm gonna keep making sure we can be uh, assertive and transparent honest in these discussions very embarrassing gaffes with the name flip-ups yesterday also though that press conference you cannot imagine trump contending comprehensively with the complex subjects foreign policy wise that Biden was talking about with the slip ups, with tone of voice, whatever. That is just undeniable because, again, we're talking about a binary choice and uh, that's where the discussion needs to center. And then you have Biden also saying this rambling about. Take what he's been talking about. Hannibal Lecter, he says, is a nice guy. Uh, Trump would rather be electrocuted than eaten by a shark. You know that whole thing? Remember that? Poor Donald. He can't even watch TV this week because it's Shark Week. <laughs> and by the way. 
Yeah, that's Trump's now rather notorious electrocution or eaten by a shark rant that Biden's referencing. And actually, I think I got clips sort of flipped around. So here's more on the free pass Trump has been getting. Look, this is deadly earnest. When that butcher Putin, who I know and have known for a long time, when he invaded Ukraine, here's what Trump said. I'm not making this up either. He called him a genius and said it was wonderful. What in the hell is going on? But people would rather talk about how I mix up names. I guess they don't remember that Trump called Nikki Haley Nancy Pelosi. Well, no. No more. Donald, no more free passes. Yeah, I think it's pretty dang simple, really. It's a simple proposition. Let's be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Especially media outlets who I don't think have been handling this moment like our show has. To pat myself on the back. <laughs> which is not to lose sight of everything else while having these discussions. That's the thing. It's not saying ignore the Biden stuff or the Trump stuff, but also... The magnitude of danger of the Trump stuff is such that I do think you could make a very compelling case that it should be getting more emphasis. But the counterpoint would be the emphasis on the Biden stuff is because of the danger of the Trump stuff, wanting to make sure we have the best person to defeat Trump. Absolutely understandable. But it is weird how I've been talking about on our members only bonus show that you can get access to by clicking the join button below. I've been talking about how. It's so hard to prep the show each day because the normal outlets that we go to to prep are so one topic that it's hard to sort of create a robust show because we'll talk, talk about that topic, but then other stuff too, we want to round it out with more than just one story. And that's been difficult. So that's, I think, what he's talking about. He's even admitting here, making mistakes and don't boo the media, but... Let's not give Trump a free pass either. Name me another president done any of that. Look, if you want to know how bad a businessman Trump really is, just think about this. He inherited millions of dollars only to squander it. He's filed bankruptcy six times. He even went, he even went bankrupt, he even went bankrupt running a casino. I didn't think that was possible. And I really have to say, while we can all admit we're not in the most perfect ideal situation at this moment, given all of the obstacles it feels like we have to overcome before November, there are things, as we've been talking about, that as someone who's clearly asserting he's staying in the race that Biden will need to do to overcome those obstacles. And being more aggressive, energetic, concise, and mocking Trump more often, showing that sort of vibe, I do think makes a big difference. And that's what we're seeing here. I don't want to complicate, but just look at this right-wing Project 2025. Oh, but it's really focused on, you heard about it. It's a blueprint for the second Trump term. Right, and we've had lots and lots of Project 2025 discussion on the show recently, and then you have this. We've never seen anything like this, and it's not a joke. It's time for us to stop treating politics like entertainment and reality TV. Another four years with Donald Trump is deadly serious. Deadly serious. His proposals are deadly serious. America. Exactly right. So one of the things I've been saying is in our lives as we go out there and advocate on behalf of democracy and this election being so important in the preservation and continuation of democracy, the case that is the most compelling and because of our principles, 
that means it has to be the most honest, it has to be fully honest. And so that means you don't have to ignore, if you're talking to people, their concerns about Biden. To say, let's have a policy conversation and contrast these two individuals. Their governance, W. Biden. Their character, W. Biden. And their respect for democracy, W. Biden. And on paper, Biden's had a very successful presidency. And so you don't have to ignore your lying eyes, the phrase goes something like that, to understand just how easy this decision should be in November. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Thank you for being a viewer of the show. If you want to do more to support the work we do, you can do so by clicking the join button below. And let me know what you thought of all of that in the comments.